Let us go to the Lord in prayer for this time of illumination. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to your word, as we come to your holy scripture, and as we read these words, Father of truth, may these words pierce our hearts. May we not be afraid to allow the Holy Spirit to search us and know us so intimately. And Father God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. During the month of July, our senior pastor, Garrett Dawson, is going to be preaching from three different psalms. And so he asked me to pick one of them as we start this new series. And I picked Psalm 139 because it's a convicting psalm for Whitney. It has pierced my heart over the period of time. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go. Hear the words of the Lord. And I am going to read all of it, not just a few verses. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you've known me. You know when I sit down, you know when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue. Whew. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you form my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. Every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O oh God. O oh, men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O oh Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Man shall not live by bread alone. Do you remember growing up, maybe even in this church since we recognized last Sunday many of our Members who'd been here from 50 to 90 years. I have to tell you, that was an amazing moment to see who was here and to see that we had well over 100 folks that have been in this congregation a long time. But growing up in this church, do you remember the song, Trust and Obey, the old hymn? Raise your hand. You remember that song? I remember growing up at little old Carrollton Presbyterian Church in New Orleans, and I remember the, the word says, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Now as a kid growing up, I thought we sang that song every week. But now that I'm older, I realize we only do it a few times a year. But think about that simple chorus with a very simple truth. 
The only way to have a fulfilling relationship with Jesus is to completely trust him. When you look at this particular Psalm 139, this is a trust psalm. It starts out with the words, search me. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. Who do we trust? Do we trust the Lord Jesus that knows you better than anybody else? This psalm is a beautiful example of a trust psalm. Certain parts of it are familiar to all of us. Some of you may remember the words, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? You discern my going out. You discern my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, you know it altogether. Do you understand that there are so many times words on my tongue have fallen out? I have said things that I regretted, but the Lord knew. And I spent the rest of the day or the rest of the week or the rest of the year asking my spouse or my children for forgiveness. I have been blessed that God made all of us. We've all been blessed. He made us, he knows us, and he wants us to seek him, and he wants us to follow him so that we could have an intimate relationship with him. Now I want you to ask yourself quietly this question. How intimate are you with God right now? Think about it for just a moment. How intimate are you with the Father? What are you intimate enough to ask of Him? Then the other question is, how willing are you to hear the truth from the Father? How willing are you to hear the Father share something that could be very difficult to share for you to hear? You see, I went to see our beloved David Lodi graduate from seminary just two months ago. And while out there, David said, next week is the pastor's conference. I really want you to come. I want you to be with a gentleman named Daryl Johnson who's been a pastor for about 39 or 40 years. And for those 39 or 40 years, he literally, every single day, has taken 15 minutes. And so the opening of the pastor's conference Those 15 minutes consisted of a calendar for daily reading. He pulls out this weathered old piece of paper, and he said, what it's done for me for structure, John Stott taught me this 39 years ago. I need to have a plan. The Lord is going to search me and know me, yes, but how much do I want to know the Lord? And without a plan, we fail. Consistently, we fail. And I know that without a plan, even a pastor fails. I've read through the Bible a few times, but I wanted something that was going to be different. And the gentleman's name is McChaney. He was born in 1813. He died in 1843. For 30 years, he came up with a reading plan that he shared with his spouse and his family. And the fact was that plan was to read the whole Bible through in a year. But not only read the Bible, you read the Psalms twice. So since May the 2nd, I've already gotten up to Psalm 143, and I've worked my way through a few books of the Bible. As intimidating as it is to read the Word, most of us, including Whitney, do not always have a plan. We just open the Bible and boom, let's start here. But this passage, so rich, has caused me to wonder, what is it that I need to do to grow deeper in love with Jesus? Are you intimate with the Father right now? There's no higher calling in our lives than to love and to worship the personal God of all creation. There are going to be a lot of distractions in this life, and we've got a lot of them. If you've been a part of this fellowship for the past 12 months, we've talked a lot about General Assembly. And what a blessed General Assembly it was. We had 450 pastors sitting in this room for four and a half days being filled with the Holy Spirit through the preaching of the Word. 
But those men were just as hungry as I was when I went to Canada. I was desiring to learn to sit still. And as I sat still for four and a half days and heard the preaching, Daryl said, all that really matters is that you take the word and you spend some time alone reading. There are going to be weeks that you're not going to do it. There are going to be days you're going to miss. But he said, it's okay to miss. Just pick up the next day with the next psalm. Don't neglect the Savior. He knows us better than anything else. He wants to know you in a way that's almost impossible to explain. And you say, well, I'm too busy. You're not too busy. We all have got to get up at 4 or 5 or 6 in the morning, carve out 15 to 20 minutes. Carve out a little time where it's just you and him by yourself. And David and I were going through all these discussions of all the things we were hearing and learning. And I said, David, I've read scripture over and over. But to have a plan where you say, I'm going to stay on track. I'm going to be committed. And we have been texting and emailing and encouraging each other every single day. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. But do you know what really matters to God? It's not LSU football or LSU sports. It's not the General Assembly. It's not hunting and fishing or golf. What really matters to God is that intimate time that we spend with the Father. This chapter is so convicting because basically the Lord is talking to King David and King David has spilled his guts. He has confessed his heart that I have sinned against you, Father, and yet you love me intimately no matter how badly I sin. Every one of us has fallen short, including me. Not just once, not just twice. I fall short every day. Oh, Lord, you have searched me. King David's overwhelmed by the truth that God has thoroughly exposed him, and yet even in the being exposed, of his sin, he is willing to intimately love King David. He also exposes all of our pretensions, and yet it's comforting to know that there is no need of pretension before God. God knows Whitney Alexander through and through. He knows how lazy I am. He knows if I'm working too hard. He knows if I'm being too busy. And really, busyness is a sin. Being too busy is not walking with God. It takes a lot to get that through my thick skull. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been thoroughly exposed by God? Have you ever been thoroughly exposed? King David was found out by his sin. And there were consequences, as Scripture says, to the sin. You know, most of us don't ever show our true self to everyone. We've got the persona that's out there in front of others where we want people to recognize us and approve of us for all that we do, all of our achievements. But who are the people that you are intimately letting into your life? There are a couple of my friends in the back here today that have been a part of my journey for many years. And they would even say, in the course of the journey, we've come to know each other, but do we really know everything about each other? It only happens if you're willing to commit to that kind of intimacy with the Savior and then with a small group of friends. You know, this church for my 14 years here has preached and preached on small group Bible studies, six-week studies, a Galatians study coming up next week. Hey, you can start right there at your own home just having 15 to 20 minutes by yourself. You don't always have to go somewhere. But after that relationship with the Savior begins, you can then move to that next level of relationship with the Savior by maybe beginning with a group of people. And you won't even know sometimes who the people are in the group, but you'll be so blessed by the ones the Lord brings in for a period of time. Do you want 
the Savior to search you and to know you? He knows everything already. But I mean, do you really want that? Another suggestion I would have is no matter where you are, or no matter what vacation you're at, no matter what city, state, country you're in, always worship somewhere with a corporate group of believers. When I go to Casa El Dabare in Egypt next month, I will be worshiping with a thousand believers. When they do a greeting, the greeting lasts 30 minutes. They get out of the pews. They give each other a hug because they don't know if they'll be together again. But in the body of Christ, isn't that what it should be like? Where we get together and we allow the brothers and sisters to hold us for a second and say, I love you in the name of Christ. I know you've heard lots of things about that particular country, but it's not just that country. We all have friends, I'm sure, all over the world. Are we willing to continue to develop those relationships to go deeper and deeper? It was four years ago, well, actually, now it's been six years ago since David Lodi worked here as a, a youth pastor. And I can remember David Lodi coming in and a very confident young man, but very humble. And he sat like literally less than seven feet. His desk was over there. But every single day, he would ask me, how are you really doing? He saw the busyness in my life, but he said, no, really, how are you doing? How have the last 24 hours of your life been like? Have you spent the last 24 hours so busy that you couldn't stop long enough to give your family a hug, to spend time with your children, your grandchildren. It might be a novel idea to turn off the TV, or I know this group's not doing video games, except unless you're under 20. There's a few older people that do video games. But where you just go home and just be completely quiet. Just be in the presence When's the last time that you just walked out in your backyard and looked at the creation of the backyard? What God has given you, there are so amazing gardens in this community. I told the earlier service, I have been blessed with more cucumbers this year than ever before. You guys have just kept me fed with cucumbers. I never knew Baton Rouge could grow so many. And I know I've changed my diet a little and I've lost a couple pounds, but... Keep bringing them on. I love vegetables again. Where do you see God at work in your life? Where do you see God at work in the service of your life? You know why it was so fun to get ready for the General Assembly? Because a group of believers were willing to give up their Saturday after Saturday and just work together. I had a transportation team here of 73 drivers. Unbelievable. Most of us did not know each other. And honestly, most of them said, I've never driven a 15-passenger van. I love that. That was comforting. But the fellowship and the richness of being together for four and a half days, these men and women drove 6,626 miles around Baton Rouge, just picking up pastors and people back and forth. And tonight we're going to get together and have a little camaraderie for about two hours because they want to just tell stories. Tell what the Holy Spirit did in their lives as they met brothers and sisters around the world and around. We had 193 missionaries here for those five days. It blew me away, especially since they only said 90 were coming. And they kept coming until 2.45 in the morning. I just wouldn't go to sleep until the last one got picked up. I wanted to make sure they all got to their place of rest. You see, sometimes we're so busy, we forget what is really important is relationship with the Father. And I'm preaching to myself. I'm not preaching just to you. I'm preaching that when I examine my own life, there are areas of weakness but don't think for a second that our Father is invisible. He wants to be a part of your life. Our Father in heaven treasures those moments with us. 
King David realized at the end of this passage, and he says again, Lord God, search me. Know my heart. Know my thoughts. See if there's be any grievous way in me and lead me in that way everlasting. I don't know when you leave this place if you have some business where you need to ask for forgiveness or you need to ask for a pardon from your family members. But I do know this. Many times in my own marriage, I might have said, Phyllis, I'll be home in 30 minutes and an hour and a half later. There is no reason for excuses. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. There is going to be failure. It happens to all of us. The Savior wants and desires to be with you in an intimate way. You may be saying, well, I haven't never tried that. I don't even know what you're talking about. That's okay. You start with your family. You start with your wife and your children. If you're not married, you find a close friend. If you don't have a close friend, call me. We'll start a new group. I'm serious. Because there are a bunch of men that I preached to in the earlier two services that have never been in a small group. They don't know what that looks like, to be able to treasure and allow the Holy Spirit to work in ways unbeknownst to all of us. I don't have all the answers. I live my best. I make tons of mistakes. But I know Jesus is there to pick me up when I fail. My prayer is that you would not let the grievous ways continue to grow. If you have some things that need to be taken care of, don't be afraid to take care of those today. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you loved us enough to die on the cross and to send your one and only Son who had already searched us long before today. And Father, in just a few moments, we're going to go before you with the Lord's table. And I pray, Lord God, as we go before this table, that we would be willing, that we would take a moment to ask you for forgiveness of all of the sins that we have committed against you. Even in the last 24 hours, we have grievously sinned against you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that we have a chance now to have a hymn of response all the way that my Savior leads me. In Christ's name, amen.